I'm Lauren. Welcome back to Story Pirates University live stream week two. Amazing, amazing, amazing. We are live coming to your homes right now via the interwebs. And this is going to be amazing. As I said, I'm Lauren. This is Story Pirates University. You might be wondering if you weren't here last week, what is Story Pirates University? Well, as you know, the Story Pirates take stories written by kids and they turn them into amazing sketch comedy and song. You might know our podcast. You might know our books. You might know a lot of those things, but we also do work in classrooms all over the country. And that's what we're doing right here. We're making our classroom open to all of you at home. So last week, we did something amazing, which was so super fun because every university needs a mascot. We created some mascots together. So today we're going to show you a few of our favorite mascots and we'll unveil the official Story Pirate mascot. So, I see a lot of names are already coming in right now. There's Sam. Hi, Sam. Can you say hi? Hi. Hi, Sam. So hey, everybody. We have names that are already coming in. If you want uh, to just practice, we're going to be asking you for some suggestions. You can see there's a box directly below us right here in the Story Pirates University portal. If you type in your name and hit send, it'll get to me. If you're watching on YouTube and are wondering, where is this? If you look in the description, there's a link to the Story Pirates University portal, which has this form that you can use for suggestions. So, as I said, we did mascots last week and it was so super fun. And so, so Sam, I was thinking of this thing, like, like I was practicing, you know, like, like this, this morning, I was thinking how much I love Story Pirates University. And I came up with a cheer. Do you want to see it? Oh, I so, I definitely want to see it. Okay. Okay. Ready? Ready? It's, it's very simple. It's very simple, but I think it's really fun. Okay. Right. It goes SPU, SPU. I sure love it. How about you? SPU, SPU. I sure love it. How about you? Oh, uh, SPU, SPU. I sure love it. How about you? Uh, SPU, SPU. I sure love it. How about you? You just asked me. I have to answer. Um, SPU, SPU. I sure love it. How about you? Uh, SPU, SPU. I sure love it. How about you? I didn't ask me. I sure love it. How about you? Wait a second. We keep going back and forth and back and forth. And we keep getting more excited. And if we keep doing it, we might get so excited that our heads are going to explode. So maybe we should just take a deep breath and calm down. Oh, Sam, that's a very good. I like that. So sometimes cheers, they could just get out of hand. And oh, good. I'm feeling that good. was a lot. I'm feeling that was a lot. And that was a lot. I'm feeling, I'm feeling a lot better. Okay, good. Okay, good. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a lot better. And I'm, I'm feeling so much better. Um, th that it's time to do attendance. Um, oh. Attendance at the beginning of every class. Sam, are you excited to see who is here today? I it's can't like wait to find out. Kids here. Um, okay, amazing. So we have a lot of kids out there. Hello, everyone. I see that we have Hannah. Yay! Hi, Hannah. We have Helen. We have Sursa. I think Sursa is that right? I hope so. Like Sursa Ronan. Um, Liam. We have Elise. It's Elise's fifth birthday. Happy birthday, Elise! You made it to five. You're so Woo! amazing. We have Maya. We have Hero and Max. We have Liana and Roy. We have Sydney. We have Ethan and Adelina. Will, Nate, Greta, Charlie, and Sam. We have Ellie and Langley. We have Flynn. We have Simon and Ruby. We have Nathaniel. Jude, Haddon and Trevor, Liam, Teddy, Lillian, Nora, and Leland, Henry, Gwendolyn, Liam, lots of Liams today. Maybe the same Liam? I don't know. We have Wesley, Eloise, and Thomas, Clara, Cola, and Adira, Santiago, Faith, Sid, and Sehal, and Vereo. I hope I said those right. If not, I apologize. This is amazing. We have so many friends and students out there today. Now that we've done attendance, um, if I didn't say your name, don't worry. There will be time later as well for you to make suggestions. We have so many amazing students today. For any of you who are new, there's something I want to tell you. It's a very special thing. Okay, we did attendance. After you do attendance, so we have a very, very special Story Pirates rule. And I'm going to get close because it's like, it's very important. Okay, so our rule in Story Pirates is that when you are here with us on the live stream, you have permission to get weird. 
What that means is you can tell us your weirdest, wildest ideas, your most creative ideas, and we absolutely love them. So to use an example, we got some amazing weird mascots last week, and I want to show you a couple of them, and then Sam is going to act them out. We got so many amazing weird mascots, everyone. We got about like over 60 mascots. It was so oh. great. I saw every single one of them. They all made my day. We're just going to show you a few of them. And then in a few minutes, we're going to tell you what the official Story Pirates mascot is. But first, I just want to show you a little bit of our mascots. So first up, we have this incredible, incredible mascot. This is from Emmeline. And this is a mascot called Swashbuckling Pirate. And what you may look at this and think, what kind of animal is this? This is an echidna, which is a spiny anteater that lives in Australia. Isn't that amazing? And instead of spines, you can see that this echidna has pencils, pencil scales, a pirate hat, an eye patch. Instead of eating ants, this echidna eats words. And Swashbuckling Pirate the Echidna's cheer that Emmeline came up with is Bloody Blah. It's so amazing. I love this so much. Sam, would you show us Swashbuckling Pirate the Echidna saying Bloody Blah? Yes, I will. Bloody Blah! I'm Swashbuckling Pirate the Echidna. Crikey, I'm a crikey echidna. It's kind of like an anteater, except instead of ants, I eat words. Also, instead of regular quills, I got pencils. These are my pencil quills, so I can write with all of me. Crikey, bloody blah. Amazing, amazing. Sam, your Australian accent is impeccable. <laughs> amazing. Okay, let's see one more. So if you have a weird idea for a character, you can type it in the box right now and we'll have Sam act out one of yours. So you can type it, type your name and an idea for a weird character in that box right now while we show you one more of our favorite mascot. So we had Swashbuckling Pirate, the Echidna, who was incredible. And then we also have this one. I really loved this one as well. This one is by Romy. And Romy came up with a piece of paper named Wright, but it's spelled W-R-I-G-H-T, which I love. And the paper named Wright has creative power. You can see it's throwing out a creative imagination ball. It has a tail, it has hands and um, uh, legs, and its cheer is with paper and pen, you'll never be bored again. I love this so much. Sam, can we see a little bit of write the piece of paper? With paper and pen, you'll never be bored again. That's right, I'm right, right. Like you're writing on a piece of paper because I'm a piece of paper. Here is my magical rainbow ball, which I use to write on my paper. You'll never be bored again, huzzah! Amazing, amazing, amazing. So those were two of our favorite mascots that we saw. We'll share more of them tomorrow. We got so many incredible mascots. But now I see that we have some brand new characters that you all just came up with right now. And this first one is incredible. Okay, so we got a lot of animals in this one, Sam. So give stretch it out. So this is from Ellie and Langley. And they want to see you play a dancing chimpanzee shark. Let's see. Whoa! I am dancing and I am a chimpanzee shark. So I like to eat bananas and then I also like to eat people. That's me. Amazing. I love that so much. Okay, we're going to do one more. This is also an animal. I love this. This is from Faith. And Faith would like to see a purple mon a purple monkey that sings songs from 80s movies. A purple monkey that sings songs from movies from the 1980s. You and I were there, we know it well. Let's see it. Whoa, hey everyone, I'm a purple monkey. And I love more than anything else to sing 80s movie songs. That's the power of love. Ba, 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 da, da, da. Tom is a crazy thing because Back to the Future is a song. Is a show, is a movie that has lots of songs from the 80s. Nice! That's the power.
power of love. I love it. I love it. I love it. Amazing. Okay. So we have so many great characters, but I want to show you the time has come. Drum roll is happening. I would like to now unveil the official mascot of Story Pirates University, which was incredible. This drawing was so good. It was full of so many things. Are you ready? This is my tiny trumpet. It's going away. Okay, the official mascot of Story Pirates University, drum roll please, is Captain Creative from Sasha, who is 11 years old and lives in Somerville, Massachusetts. Also shout out to Elise, Sasha's sister. I believe this was the same Elise whose birthday maybe it is today, it's spelled the same. So Captain Creative is incredible. This mascot has everything. As you can see, it is a pirate pencil with blue hair, all right, a pirate captain hat. It has um, wings for eyebrows, which is so fun. It has an amazing blue hair and blue mustache. You can see it has a elephant for a nose, cause why not? That's what it says, purple elephant. It has magical tentacles, an orange vest, a creativity hook. It maybe came out of or lives near the wormhole of infinite weirdness. And it has a word ray. I love Captain Creative so much. We love Captain Creative so much that we had our illustrator, Camilla Franklin, draw a version of Captain Creative digitally so we could put it everywhere. Here's Captain Creative by Camilla. Sasha's drawing was so incredible. We hope we got everything, we got the word ray, the purple elephant for the nose, the magical tentacles, the creativity hook, the wings mm. for eyebrows, the infinite, uh, whole, the, the, uh, what was it? The, the, uh, wormhole of infinite weirdness. Sasha, thank you for creating such an amazing and super weird mascot for Story Pirates University. We love it so much. And we are going to see a little bit of Captain Creative right now. Sam, are you ready to show us Captain Creative? Oh, yes, I am. Hello. Hey, everybody. My name is Captain Creative, and I'm coming at you right here from the wormhole of infinite weirdness. As the creative Captain Creative, I'm a pencil. I've got blue hair. I've got wings for eyebrows. I got a nose that's a purple elephant because why not? I'm wearing an orange vest. I got an awesome word ray that I use to send words or to zap words or to get zapped by words. I have a creativity hook and all together, I'm pretty much a super awesome pirate pencil. Amazing, give it up for Captain Creative and for Sasha who created such an amazing character. We're going to show a few more of our favorite hero or heroes, mascot characters that we got um, tomorrow. So tune in then for more mascots. And, and mascots bring us finally to our lesson for the day, which is to create a brand new sport. Oh my goodness. If you have a mascot, you need to have something for them to cheer on. And we're going to create a sport on our own from our imaginations. Did you know every sport that was ever created was created by people and they just came up with it in their imaginations and then they just did it and they played it and now there's like multi-million dollar industries all around it, it's incredible. So the first thing I wanna know about our sport is, is it a team sport or is it an individual sport? So let me explain that, what I mean. So now we're back here, team sport or an individual sport. So. Some sports you play on teams, right? For example, you have soccer, you have water polo, lacrosse, football, baseball, hockey, volleyball, rugby, cricket. These are all sports that are played on teams, okay? Where a bunch of people get together and they play another bunch of people. There are also individual sports where you have one person at a time and they're trying to uh, maybe be the fastest or be the most accurate or something like that, right? So individual sports, there's rock climbing, there's archery, tennis can be an individual sport, one versus another person, or it can be a double sport. Um, there's gymnastics, marathon running, shot put, where you throw, uh, hurl a small iron ball, it's very strange. Um, swimming, boxing, golf, figure skating, cycling, these are all individual sports where one person 
basically competes against other people who are also, you know, single, one person, right? So what I want to know now first is, is our sport that we're going to be making, is it an individual or team sport? And if it's a team sport, how many people are on a team? So you can fill that in in the chat. Individual or team sport. And then if it's a team sport, how many people are on a team? There, this really uh, varies, right? A lot of times, like in basketball, there's like five people on each team at once, but then the whole team is bigger. In football, there's a defensive team and an offensive team and they switch off. Um, this really varies, right? Soccer, you have one team that is playing another team over the whole course. Um, so is it an individual or a team sport? So I'm gonna go to our sport starter and we'll start filling this out. Okay, so first things first, is it an individual or a team sport? I see that Liana and Roy say it's a team sport. So I'm gonna say, whoop, I'm not gonna do that in gray. Let's see, I'm gonna get a, let's see, dark blue. Um, and I'm gonna say it's a team sport. So how many people are on the team? How many people do you need to play whatever this sport is? Okay, amazing. The Maloney kids say there are 10 people or 10 players, let's say. We don't necessarily know. So it's a team sport with 10 players on each team. I love it. This is our idea for this sport. The next thing I want to know is where do you play this sport? Okay, is it a field? Is it a stadium? Is it a pool? Is it a rock cliff? Where do you play this sport? So I'll show you some examples. So different sports are played different places, right? We have a hockey rink over here, right? That's played on ice. We have a baseball diamond, which is played, is baseball is played on grass, basically. Sometimes that grass is fake grass. Um, we have a beach volleyball, uh, which is played on the beach and you just put up a net. And we can even play sports in the water, right? So we have uh, sailing, if you're doing a, a sailing race, it's on the open ocean. We could even think of things that are not normal places to go, okay? So where do we play this sport? Okay, we are getting some amazing ideas. Um, okay, I love this. I'm going to combine two ideas here. Ellie said a volcano and Griffith said in trees. So how about a volcano in the trees? I love this so much. So I'm going to write this down here. Can someone tell me what are some things I should draw? If this, if you were picturing this maybe even from above, what does this look like? A volcano in the trees is, is where is the volcano? Where are the trees? Where is the field? What, what, what should I draw here? If I'm thinking about this from up top, what should I draw about a volcano in the trees? I'm going to start drawing a little bit here while we're waiting. So what should I draw? Tell me more about the volcano in the trees. Where is the volcano? Is it in the middle? Is it, oh, okay. Hugo said it's played on a podium. Amazing. So here's what I'm gonna draw. I, you know what? I'm gonna draw it kind of like from the side, actually. So this is my volcano so far. I'm gonna add some red in here because there's lava I'm sure in the volcano and then there's a podium which I love so a podium podium is like a stand that you would stand on and I think that would totally make sense if you were playing a sport on a volcano you might need a podium oh, okay so let's see I'm gonna do like this like there's like ladder up to this podium. And I'm gonna put one on the other side too, because I feel like if it's a team sport, there's gonna be two teams. And I love this, Lillian is being very concerned and I love this. She said it's water instead of lava. 
so it's safe. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a little water on top of the lava, just so it's mostly safe. And I also saw that Maya said the trees and the grass are purple. So I'm gonna do some purple grass down here. Purple grass and then some purple trees. Can we get maybe one more feature of the field here? One more feature of the field. We have a podium, we have purple trees and grass. We have its volcano. And I see, oh, Bastion says, it's in the dry, dry desert. I love it. So I'm gonna add some sa sand here. Maybe we got sand dunes up the volcano. Maybe that can be a part of what we're playing. So a dry desert, volcano. We have podiums. We have a volcano with lava and water, podiums, purple grass, purple trees, and it's in the dry, dry desert. I love this. There's a lot to work with here, a lot to work with. So the next question is, what do you need to play this sport? Are there any pieces of equipment you need? So I'll give you some examples, okay? So we have, we need supplies for sports, right? For baseball, you need a glove, you need a bat. This is a picture of a bunch of different kinds of shoes that you need. Are there shoes we need um, for this? Because we have lava, we have grass, and um, there are even sports that you need an animal for, like polo. You, people actually ride horses when they're playing polo. There's also all sorts of different kinds of sports balls, soccer ball, there's a racket for tennis, all sorts of things. So what do we need to play this sport? So think about where we have our sport, which is on a volcano with podiums and desert and grass. What do we need? Amazing. We have such a specific detail here from Clara says there are seven bats hiding in the water. Whoa, seven bats hiding in the water. Okay, let me just move this around. Lauren, is that like baseball bats or like flying bats? That's what I was wondering actually. Can someone tell me, is that baseball bats or flying bats? Um, I see as well, Quinn said you need a spork. I love that. I'm very curious what we're going to use the sport for. So let me move this up, make a list. So we need seven bats hiding in the water. Maybe I'll have a chance to draw a few of these. I'm just moving around. There are a lot of windows I'm moving around. Okay, so we have seven bats. Oops, it's still not in the blue text. Seven. There we go. Seven bats hiding in the water. We need a spork. I see we need shows that go on your head. Shows. Bat, oh, Liam says it's bats like the animal. I love that. So we need bats like the animal. Um, we need shows that go on your head. I'm not sure what that is. If you, uh, Liana, tell me more, tell me more. I love, that. oh, shoes, oh, it was a typo. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Shoes that go on your head. I love that, shoes that go on your head. No problem, thank you, Liana. So we need seven bats that go in the water, hiding in the water, a spork, and shoes that go on your head. Whoa, is there anything else that we need? Okay, Sid says we also need buckets. I'm really curious what we're going to do with the buckets. So we have a volcano in the trees, we have purple trees, we have purple grass, platforms, a volcano with water and some lava, the water to make it safe, and we have some desert. What we need to do this, we need seven bats hiding in the water, a spork, shoes that go on your head, and buckets. Whoa, okay, so we have a setup here, which is so amazing. The next thing we need to do is think about the rules. And we need to think about how we win this game. So I've gone to our next page here, okay? Here's the serious part, rules. As we know, we're very, very serious here. So how do you win this game? Every game needs a goal. So type in for me, how do you win? What do you need to do for this game? What are the rules? We have a volcano, we have 
bats hiding in the water. We have a spork and buckets and shoes on our head. What do you need to do to win this? How are we going to use all of these things? All right, are there points? How do you get the points? How many points do you get? Um, or is it about doing something the best, right? Lots of individual sports are about being the fastest or being the most something, right? So if there are 10 people on a team in a volcano, seven bats hiding in the water, what do you, what do we need to do? How do you win this? Okay, Lloyd has a very, very succinct, very clear idea here. So Lloyd says the first team to get the most bats in three hours wins. I love that because it has a time limit and it has a goal. Here's my follow-up question. How do you get the bats? How do you get the bats? So first team to get the most bats in three hours wins. And Jade has an amazing idea here too. For extra points, you can shoot pineapple into the volcanoes. So it's like sometimes in sports, you get an extra point like in football. So you can shoot pineapples into the volcanoes for extra points. Um, Benjamin says, you pick up the bats with the spork. That makes sense. So you pick up the bats with the spork. Okay, and I have a, one more question. Okay, so what are the shoes on your head for? And how about the buckets? How do the buckets and the shoes on the head factor into this? Uh, how about the platforms? Like we have 10 people on the team. What is the strategy? So we have the next question, how does a team win? Um, we, uh, Lloyd kind of uh, got that for us. The, so it, first team, get the most bats in three hours. Um, but how, yeah, how many points do you get per bat? How do you, what, what do the shoes on the head have to do with this? Um, what do the platforms have to do with this? Uh, there's a lot of questions, a lot of moving parts to a sport, right? You pick up the bats with the spork. Do you, how do you get them down? Are you supposed to get them to a certain place? Hmm. So tell me a little bit more. Um, there's a time limit of three hours. That's when uh, we know the game is over. Ah, okay. So we said sh we got uh, a, a great idea. The shoes are protective here from the uh, lava, right? We have water over the lava but the shoes are the protective gear. And then we also, so Liam said that, and Faith said the bats go in the buckets. That makes sense. Where are the buckets? The bats go in the buckets. You gotta get the bat out of the volcano with a spork. You've got your shoe on your head, just in case you get lava. The bats go in the buckets. Are the buckets back down? Um, Penelope says that it's eight points per bat. That's a very good detail. Eight points per bat. Amazing. Okay. So first team to get the bats in three hours, the most bats. Oh, the most bats. Whoop. First team to get the most bats in three hours wins. I love this. Let's see if I can add this. Great. First team to get the most bats in three hours wins. Shoot pineapples into the volcano for extra points. Pick up the bats with the spork. The shoes are protective gear. The bats go in the buckets. It's eight points per bat. Oh my goodness. And then Ellie says the buckets float in the sky. Wow. So that's an extra challenge. You've got to get the bat into the bucket, but the bats, the buckets, excuse me, are floating in the sky. Oh, I love this. Okay, so let's move on. We have so many amazing rules. The first team to get the most bats in three hours wins. Is there only one winner? How, I guess we know that we know the game is over because it's three hours, but are there um, are there like periods? Is it like done in quarters? Is it done in halves? Um, do you take a break in the middle? So tell me more about these three hours. How is the three hours divided up into? sixths 
into eights? Do you take a break in the middle for tea like they do sometimes for cricket? They play a cricket match over days sometimes. How do you divide up these three hours? Tell me that. How do you divide up these three hours? Quarters, halves, thirds, sixths. You take a break. Maybe uh, innings like baseball or sets like tennis. Yeah, what are the divisions called? Exactly, we have sets in tennis, innings in baseball, exactly. Um, amazing. We Will says there are no breaks. So it's just three straight hours of bats and lava and buckets, and you better have eaten lunch beforehand because there are no breaks. Wow, okay. Here's my next question. We're almost done with our sport. This is so good. My next question is, are there things you are not allowed to do? One of the, the um, uh, answers we got earlier from Jade was no cheating. Okay, well, what does cheating look like? Are there things you are not allowed to do? Sometimes these are called fouls, right? Or infractions, kind of a big word. What are things you are not allowed to do in this sport? If you're thinking about getting the bat from the lava into the bucket in the sky, are there things you're not allowed to do to do that? You're using the spork, you are putting them in the bucket, you have your protective gear. What can't you do? Or what can't you use? Oh, I love this. Nora has a very important addition to number two, how, how we know it's over. If the volcano erupts, there's an emergency break. I love this. This is very, very, very sensible. So if the volcano erupts, there is an emergency break. But other than that, no break. Okay, so how do we know we're cheating? How do we know what to do and what not to do? Faith says you can't touch the bats except with the spork. That's a very big challenge because most sports are smaller than a bat. Tell me more. So we can't touch bats except with the spork. Are there any other things that you're not allowed to do? How do you get up to the bucket in the sky? How do you get up there? Can you fly up there? Can you not fly up there? What do the 10 people do? So many things to think about. So we can't touch the bats except with the spork. I'm having trouble typing. Can't touch the bats except with the spork. Ah, uh, Pierce. Pierce says, there is no enchanting the buckets to fly. You are not allowed to enchant the buckets. You are not allowed to enchant the buckets. I love that. So you're not allowed to, the, to enchant the buckets. And Jade says, you lose a point if the pineapples that you're firing into the volcano go into the buckets instead. I love this. So you lose a point if the pineapples go into the buckets. Ah, oh, amazing. And yes, Lloyd, very smart. Lloyd says, you cannot have jetpacks on you. You can't use jetpacks. Sorry, guys cannot use jetpacks. Okay, I love this so much. There are so many amazing, amazing ideas. And as always, if I didn't say one of your ideas or you didn't get to type it in time, don't worry, you can make your own sport. Okay. Lauren. So, yes. We gotta get a name for this sport. I know the name is at the very, very, very end. Amazing. It is. So. Um, the, yeah, let's do that now, actually. The name is at the very, very, very end, or it should be in my most recent version of this, it was. So what is the name of this sport? To review all of this, we have 10 players on a team. It's a team sport. It's played in a volcano in the trees. The volcano is in the middle of desert with purple trees and purple um, grass. There are platforms. There are, uh, there's water over the lava, right? And there are seven bats hiding in the water. You need a spork, you need shoes that go on your head and you need buckets. To play the sport, 
the way you win is the first team to get the most bats in three hours wins. You shoot pineapples into the volcanoes for extra points. There are floating buckets in the sky and you have to use the spork to get the bat out of the water and into the bucket in the sky. It is eight points per bat. The first team to get the most bats in three hours wins. There are no breaks unless the volcano explodes, in which case there is an emergency break. You cannot touch the bats, except with the spork. You are not allowed to enchant the buckets, so don't even try. And you lose a point if the pineapples go into the buckets instead of the volcano. And you cannot use jetpacks. So this is our sport. I think I had a blank for the name of the sport. Yes, I did. Okay, finally, name your sport. It's down here. The name of our sport. Oh, there are so many good names. Okay, the name of the sport. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm gonna go with the name of the sport from Penny is Lava Bats. Lava Bats. And maybe in some other locations, uh, it goes by Pineapple Bucket Ball, which is Gwendolyn's suggestion. So Lava Bats, AKA Pineapple Bucket Ball. Sometimes, you know how like soccer is called soccer in this country, but football somewhere else. Maybe this is a sport like that. Um, okay, the last thing, very, very, very last thing I wanna do. You can see I have physical body traits helping the player, mental traits. We're gonna talk about the players tomorrow and design a player. The last thing I want to do today is tell me about the trophy you win if you win this sport. For example, the Stanley Cup you can see over here is awesome. It's this giant silver cup. You win that if you win the hockey championship in the NHL. What I wanna know is what is the prize? It could be a trophy, it could be something else. What is the prize you win when you win this sport? And what is the name of this prize? So what is the prize that you win? And what's the name of this prize? What's the prize and what do you win? What is the name? So for example, we got the Stanley Cup. Um, there's the, it's the Vince Lombardi trophy, right, Sam, in, uh, in, in football? That's right. Yeah, and it has a football on it. Um, there's all sorts of uh, prizes that you can win. Uh, depending on if you're a good player or uh, whatever, right? In Wimbledon, Wimbledon, the tennis match, there it's like a big plate. It's like this big sort of dish that you could almost like put a turkey on. It's very strange. Um, or like gold medals that you win in the Olympics. Exactly. In the Olympics, you win gold medals. Um, okay. This is amazing. I got a suggestion from Davis. We have a huge flaming pineapple it is so fitting i love this and nate adds that it you could also have 100 crackers so how about this i'm gonna draw a bed of 100 crackers with a huge flaming pineapple on top of it i think that totally makes sense so as i draw this let me know what is the name of this trophy it's 100 crackers with a huge flaming pineapple on top huge flaming pineapple on top of a hundred crackers. Okay, I'm gonna draw these crackers. They're gonna be like round crackers because that's what I can draw. This is a bed of crackers. Let me maybe square crackers, some square crackers. Maybe they're Triscuits, maybe they're Ritz crackers. Maybe there's something else. This is a hundred crackers on the bottom. You're gonna be hungry after shooting all of these pineapples into lava. And then a huge, pineapple which is a flaming pineapple okay so i'm gonna draw a pineapple and i'm gonna draw like the cross parts of the pineapple let's see this is i'm doing my best cross parts of a pineapple i love this it's a pineapple pineapples sometimes have those little dots pineapple pineapple and it's a huge flaming pineapple so i'm gonna draw some green but then also it is with flames, flame pineapple. And we have a few amazing, amazing suggestions for the name of this, which I'm gonna put up here. So last thing for today, huge flaming pineapple and the name of this 
Flynn says it is called the Vortex Cup. I love this. The Vortex Cup. Oh my goodness. This is incredible. We created a brand new sport. It's called lava bats, maybe called pineapple bucket ball in other parts of the world. If you win it, you get the vortex cup, which is a huge flaming pineapple on top of a hundred crackers. You need to get bats out of a lava volcano, which is covered in water. You can only use a spork. You've got to get those bats into buckets that are floating in the sky, but don't you dare use jetpacks and don't try to enchant the buckets because that's against the rules. And if you get the most bats, eight points per bat at the end of three hours, if you've also gotten maybe some extra points from pineapples going into the volcano, then you win the Vortex Cup. Oh my goodness. Wow. That, I'm tired. I feel like I've played the sport just by doing this. Um, tomorrow, we are going to create players for this sport. It's so, 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 so fun. I love this sport. You went with permission to get weird so much. But first, before we part, Sam, I would love to see, can we see like a little bit of a demonstration of you playing lava bats, AKA pineapple bucket ball? And just like to get us already thinking about the players for tomorrow, can you show us this sport? Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the dry, dry desert. We are in the purple trees of outside the volcanoes and the players are entering the podium. Luckily, there is water on top of the lava to keep everybody protected. Now, the main point of this game is about getting the bats into the bucket. Now, in order to do that, you gotta have a shoe that goes on your head to protect yourself from the lava. Uh, you got and the first team to get the most bats in the bucket in three hours wins. Now, there's a couple of rules we got to go over here. There are no jet packs. There is no te uh, cheating. There is no touching bats except with the sport. Remember, you got to use your sport. All right. Now, if you win the big game, then you get the Vortex Cup, which is a huge flaming pineapple but honestly the pineapple isn't the most exciting part i'm here for the 100 crackers i can't wait for the sport to begin amazing oh my goodness i can't wait to see what sports you all come up with as you can see below, there's a place to download the sports starter that we used today. Now, you probably remembered we didn't answer two of these questions about players because we're going to do that tomorrow when we design a player for this sport. We're going to design a player for um, pineapple bucket ball, aka lava bats. Um, so if you want to submit your sport to us, this is a little bit different than last week. Last week, we had a little spot down at the bottom where you could attach it. This time, so we get all the right information from you guys, we want you to go to the submit a story page on the Story Pirates website. It should be there, it should be pretty easy to see. You can go through submit a story and that'll organize it a little bit better for us on our end. So tomorrow we're gonna show you a few more of our favorite mascots. Um, now that we've unveiled Captain Creative, which is so amazing, we're gonna create some players for the sport that we did today. And you'll have another organizer that you can do to create players for whatever sport you come up with. And it's going to be absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your ideas. This was so fun, so awesome. I love this sport so much. I wish I could go play it right now because it sounds a little bit dangerous. And you know, I, what I've got to say, Sam, is this, this really warms my heart. And I just got to say that uh, SBU, SBU, I sure love it. How about you? SBU, SBU, I sure love it. How about you? Oh no, I did it again. Okay, I really love our time together. Me really too. Very good. Awesome. So thank you, everyone. We will see you back tomorrow at 1230 at the same time to make some players for this sport. In the meantime, you can make your own with a graphic organizer below and stay creative and stay kind. Bye, everyone. Bye.